All right, turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to get a little personal with you this morning. My message this morning is entitled, Who Has the Keys to Your House? I'm going to get a little personal with you this morning, because I believe, again, if we Christians start giving ourselves over to the Lord, God may do some amazing things here through you and through I. Now, um, for those that are new, this would be one of the messages that I would take off my suit coats, roll up my sleeves, and get in your face. I'm not going to do that this morning, but just take it in that spirit. Because, my dear friends, the problem with our country is not the sinners, it's the Christians. We need to stand up and raise our homes in a godly manner. Raise our lives, each and every one of us, in a godly manner. Amen. That's for you guys this morning. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, we are failing. But that's just an extra bonus. Ephesians chapter 17, or sorry, chapter 4, verse 17. It says, this I say there too, and you, or sorry, therefore, you can remain seated because we're going to read a lot today. Um, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth not uh, walk, uh, walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Um, God didn't mince words here, did he? he? He said it. How many people agree with me that God did not mince words here? Amen? Verse 19, it says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lavishness to walk in all uncleanliness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. I put in there, I put next to that word, that, that uh, um, uh, uh, verse there, I put so sad. Ye have not so learned Christ. That's pretty sad, isn't it? If so be uh, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful uh, lust. And by the way, you say, man, didn't you just preach out of this same verse last week? I did. Different, different topic today. Uh, the put off former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful us, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the, the new man, which uh, after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Where, wherefore, put away lying and e evil speaking. Uh, sorry, we'll put away lying, speak every man truth uh, with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him uh, uh, that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands uh, uh, the, the, the thing which is good, that ye may have to give him that needeth, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the youth of edifying, that may, may, may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed in the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I borrowed Freddie's keys for 50 bucks. You can have it. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> um, uh, Freddie has seven sets of keys on his key ring. And I, I went back and I said, Freddie, what are all these keys for? And he told me for each room in his, uh, in his, in his house. 
Uh, which one's the master, the front door key, if you don't mind me asking, Freddie? The gold one? The gold one? For my sermon illustration today, the gold one's going to be the front door key, okay? Thank you, Freddie. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Uh, but let's say, for the sake of argument, the gold one is the key to the front door. Who has the key to this? Now, uh, Matthew, right? Do you know Matthew? You don't know if he's a thief, right? You don't know if he's like some psycho guy that's going to come and, you know, kill your dog and... Matthew, would you like the keys to his house? Would you give Matthew, of somebody you don't know, the keys to your house? Okay, now if I was, you know, convict and had numbers on my chest and came out of Alcatraz prison for murder, would you give the keys to your house to me? Why do we give the keys to our home to the devil? The Bible says, and neither give place to the devil. How many people have ever had somebody knock on their door? Maybe Jehovah Witnesses. How many people have ever had Jehovah Witnesses knock on their door? How many people don't answer the door to Jehovah Witnesses? How many people love to answer the door to Jehovah Witnesses? I do. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you about the gospel. Um, but you can't stop the devil from knocking. But the, God says, don't give him the keys to your house. Don't give him place. There's seven rooms, and, and one of them is uh, his room and you know, his dog house and because uh, you know, he's always in there. Hey, is that one that's worn down, amen? And uh, uh, there's other rooms there, and probably one to the shed, and we know the one to the garage. And I think this one, isn't that the one to the... the the, the, yeah, uh, yeah, the roof thing. Uh, but uh, uh, I know that one because I have the same key. Because yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, what room does God not have access to in your heart and in your life? God can have all this, but this one thing is mine. There are Christians that have that philosophy. They'll give their key to everybody and their dog, but they will not give the keys to their home to God. Thank you, sir. They won't do that. And my dear friends, today, if, if, you, if you look throughout the whole life, there are homes that are in disarray. And I'm not talking about... Um, Messiness. If you've got kids, you've got eight kids, I'm pretty sure your home is not spotless. Amen, sister? <laughs> Amen. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about spiritual disarray. My dear friends, it is time that God's people start acting like royalty. Because we are royalty. We are a child of the king. Amen? Amen? Okay, you're all awake today. We're a child of the king. And he needs to have control of every area of our lives. You would not give your house key to a thief. You know, I, I just got on, I just got on, um, what do they call it? Facebook. I'm amazing how some how dumb some people are. They show a picture of their house, or they say, "I'm at, you know so and so's at home," and it has their address. And then a week later, they say, "We're on vacation in Aruba." What does that do? It invites people to come rob your home. I remember years ago when I was at Bible college, there was a, 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 there was a thief in the area that preyed on people that way. Now, this was before the days of internet, okay? Yes, I'm old, okay? And cell phones. They didn't have cell phones back then. They had what's called pay phones, you know? 
And uh, uh, what's a payphone? Uh, just look it up on the internet or archive, Smithsonian Institute, whatever you want to call it. But they preyed on people when they were away. And not too long ago in Toronto, there was a guy that did that as well. He searched social media sites and found people that were away on vacation, and he went in and cleaned their house out, literally. They went and came home, and they had nothing. They even stole the cable wires, the HDMI cable wires. Stole everything. We do that. We let the devil in our homes, and we don't kick him out. I learned one time from a, whole, from a preacher, if the devil gets in your home, open up the door and tell him to get out. And not too long after I, I, re, I, I heard that, the devil got in my home and I opened up my apartment door and I said, devil, get out. My neighbor walked by. <laughs> like, Hello, how you doing? And he was a drunkard and an alcoholic. I think he went right into him, amen? But I said, devil, get out. Well, my, my neighbor goes, man, fighting with the devil again? Yes, sir. We got to do that. I remember one time I was driving with a preacher and an evil thought came into his head and he pulled off to the side of the highway. I'm like, well, I'm in trouble, man. We were talking. I'm, in, I'm, I'm like, what? Did I say anything wrong? I'm in the passenger seat and he gets out. I didn't say anything to him. He gets out, comes around and around to the, the, the passenger side and he goes to the back, back door, opens up the car door and says, Devil, get out! We joke and smirk at that, but to that, to, to, well, to me and to him, that was real. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, et cetera, et cetera. Why do we allow the devil just to camp out in our home? My dear friends, you could be the super spiritual Christian, the preacher, or whatever else. But sometimes the devil becomes a house guest. And he sticks around until we kick him out. The story, the story Justin knows illustration is a great illustration for this little sermon this morning. And I, again, I'm not going to be long. It says, a man who lived in the desert bought a favorite pet camel. The camel carried spices, wood, and tents from place to place for the man. And sometimes the man just rode on the camel, and they made their journeys together. Every night the man cooked his supper over the fire and set up his tent nearby and the tent was warm and the desert nights were very cold. And one night the camel stuck his nose in and opened the tent. Master, said the camel, my nose is a bit cold. If I could just get my nose inside your tent, I would sleep better. Yes, the camel. Uh, yes, the man said to the camel. The tent is large enough for your nose, but uh, you may put your nose in the tent. So the camel stuck his nose in the tent under the front flap of the tent. And not long after, the camel said, Good master, thank you for letting me put my nose in the tent. My nose is beautifully warm, but the rest of my head uh, would like to be near you too. The man thought the camel is too large to come in, in this tent, but his head is small. He can put his, you can put, he can put his head in my tent. The camel wiggled his head into the tent, and, but very soon says, Kind master, I may catch cold if my head is warm, but my body is cold. May I, may I please put my neck inside too? The camel requested the same. Uh, the request, request seemed reasonable. So the man said, You may put your neck in the, head, in the tent too. After a little while, 
The camel said, generous master, I'm tired of standing here. May I kneel my front, with my front legs in the tent? And the master did not want his, his animal exhausted in the morning, so he moved over and allowed the camel to put his nose, head, and neck, in the, and, and, and his front legs in the tent. And the man was beginning to fall asleep when he heard, Wonderful master, I do not want you to be uncomfortable in the night. I worry that when I kneel this way, Half in, and out, half in and out of the tent, cold air rushes in, in your tent. Perhaps I should come all the way in so that you may close the flaps behind me. The man agreed and opened the tent and the fla of the flaps, and the camel came inside. But when the camel was in the tent, uh, uh, the camel said, We have a problem. The tent is too small for both of us to lie down and sleep. I think it would be better if you went outside to sleep. And with that, the camel pushed his master out of the tent and would not let him back in. While shivering outside in the cold, the man thought to himself, I should never have let the camel put his nose into the tent. I didn't think that his nose was a bad thing, but if I had stopped his nose from coming in, the rest of him would not have followed, and I would still be warm in bed. Folks, the devil puts his nose inside the tent, your tent. And he's not satisfied with that. I'm not preaching against TV. If you have TV, I do. I'm not preaching against that. I, I, I'm not preaching against video games. I'm not preaching against movies, if they're the good movies. I'm not preaching against that. What I'm preaching against is letting the devil get inside the tent, your tent today. Because he doesn't want a little bit of ground. He wants the whole ground. Amen. He's not happy until you young couple is. He's not happy until the kids are living for the devil. He's not happy until, until, until uh, 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 you're not in church anymore. And then he'll say, huh, I guess your God isn't that strong. Why'd you worship him anyways? You're stupid. And the devil does not like you. He may say, oh, I love you. Come, come, I'll take care of you. Come, come I'll take, take care of you. Nah, he'll take care of you with your, his foot on your head. He'll destroy you. Again, once Satan gets his nose inside your tent, everything else will follow. I want to give you some inroads that we have made collectively as Christians by, for the devil by giving him the keys to certain areas of our lives. And it is dangerous. When I want to give you, I only have two points this morning. When we give the devil the keys to our houses, number one, it is when we do the works of the devil. When we do the works of the devil, you say, man, I don't do that. Well, if you ain't working for God, you ain't working, you're working for the devil. Because the devil doesn't want you to be more like him and you're doing, you're, you're just satisfying his needs. Him, not as in the devil, but him as in God. In 1 John 3, 8, it says, uh, he that uh, cometh sins is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning, for his purpose, uh, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What are the devil's works? Now, let me, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. I think, and I don't know you guys, some of you well enough, but I think we all probably have committed one of these at one time in life. Here's some works of the devil that, and there's many more, but this is the ones I want to share with you today. Accusations. Whether they be true or false, accusations. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. It says, And, and I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven uh, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which is accused them before our God day and night. How many people like to be accused of something? Yay! There are three things that I don't ever like to be accused of. A liar, 
a whoremonger, and a thief. I don't like to be accused of that. How many people would like to be accused of any of those three? Would you like to be called a thief? No. Well, who, who, who accused me of that? The guy was accused of the devil to accuse me of that. How many people have ever accused somebody of something? Raise your hand. Whether it be true or false. Well, we've all done it. Maybe. The second thing may be destruction. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 10, 11 says, uh, and, they, uh, and they had a king over them, which, the, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Who's that? The devil. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abalon, but in the Greek tongue is Apollyon. If you are not a builder of your home, oh, I like this. Ooh, so good. If you're not a builder of the home, you're a destroyer of it. I'm going to make that statement again. If you are not a builder of your home, you are a destroyer of it. What do we need to build our home on? Anybody? Christ. Our foundation of our home, the cornerstone of our home and our faith needs to be Christ. And if we're not, we're in trouble. How about evil? Hmm. I pray, John 17, verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldst take them uh, out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. The word evil shows us that the evil one, Lucifer, the old smutty face, the, the whatever you want to call him himself, it's picturing us with him and it's causing harm. This harm may be physical or mental or even spiritual. And the devil... See, you know what? So you want to know something? If... Okay, I went to Bible college with a guy. And, and, and I know we're in amongst kids, and please forgive me. I just feel led to the Lord to talk to this. His, his older brother did things to him, if, if, you, if you catch my drift. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Did... And, and I, he was talking, and, and a bunch of us were talking. He said, well, he must have been in you know, pornography. He said, it wasn't that. It was the Sears Robot catalog. He saw the bathing suit section, and it caused the lust. Not only did it to him, but he did it to his sister caused the lust. If, dad, it may not bother you. Husband, it may not bother you, but it could bother other people in your home. And if it bothers the littlest one in the home, it should bother you. Amen? Oh, well, that's just stupid. Well, if that word stupid bothers, bothers your little kid, you better not use it. How many of us have been dumb enough to use things, do, do things that have bothered our kids but have never bothered us? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. How about dishonesty? John 8, 44, it says, uh, uh, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. And when uh, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth, because the truth is not in him, and when he speaketh, uh, uh, and when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You ever told a half-truth? It's dishonest. Well, it's a little white lie. Dishonest. How about resisting the light of, to do right? Zechariah 3.1. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Wow. You ever resist God? Hey, uh, so-and-so, I need you to, my child, I need you to do this. No. First thing we resist in, what's the first thing usually Christians resist in? Anybody? Anybody? 
Second thing is loving your neighbor. Third thing is giving the gospel out. And if we resist, I always said, if God has your heart, he has everything. He'll have it all. He'll have your relationship with your wife, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your fellow church members, your kids' relationships with your, your peers and your, and your higher uh, church pastor's relationship with his uh, congregation, congregation with his pastor. If God has your heart, everything will be okay. You know, everything's all right in my father's house. Well, it is, but is it all right in your house? Amen? My amen guy's not here this morning. I miss him. Oh. Oh, this next one I think we've all done. Oh, it hurts. Turn your Bible to first. I want you to read this one. First Samuel chapter 15. Oh. Oh, this hurts because we've all done it. And if you say you haven't done it, well, you're kind of probably not. First Samuel 15, 23. You there? For what? For what? For rebellion is the sin as? Oh. Uh, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You ever rebelled? <sighs> you know, people say, they, well, only the cream of the crap goes to Bible college. No. I learned that very quickly. No. There's a lot of kids at Bible college that are rebellious. And there's a lot of Christians sitting in churches this morning that are rebellious. I told you I was going to get in your face this morning. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. Rebellion is if saying, can I bore you for a second? Can, I, can, can you come on up? All right, cool. All right. Okay, get you. Remember Pinocchio? Remember Pinocchio? Yeah. Okay, you're going to be Pinocchio for a second. All right. And who is Pinocchio's master? Geppetto. All right, what did Pinocchio want? to be a real boy. So what happened to Geppetto? And uh, by the way, I'm not saying because you're dressed in plaid, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> didn't Pinocchio always wear plaid? No. I'm telling I don't know what Pinocchio... But so he, he cut his... He, he re, uh, Pinocchio rebelled. Mm -hmm. Wanted to be a real boy. What happened? Did he succeed? Mm -hmm. He went his own way and he... What? Mm -hmm. Failed. And he lied. So what happened when he lied? Birds a little stood on the hill. But ultimately what happened? He became back a what? A puppet. So when Geppetto pulled the string and he pulled no you see now there's his rebellion there. <laughs> and he and he pulled the string. And maybe he pulled the string. And I promise I won't get you to do weird things. No, <laughs> but he pulled the string. And when he pulled the string to step forward, he did. But when Pinocchio had his strings cut, what happened? He, he fell. Thank you, my friend. That's what happens to us. Well, I know what I want. You might. How many people would like a big, huge honking steak for lunch? Freddie and I are going for steak, amen? How many people would like a banana split for dessert? Well, glory, amen. Big human, amen. How many people would like a round-the-world cruise on the HMCS Titanic? <laughs> if you get your own way, you are basically on the ship of the HMCS Titanic. What, what, what did the builder say? Not even God himself could sink the ship. Mm. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall I also reap. And guess what? When we sin, it affects more than just us. It affected a whole pile. That stupid statement, oh, sorry, unwise statement, affected my family because I had a family member die in the HMCS Titanic.
long, 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 long lost relative. Your rebellion is as sin as witchcraft. How many people have honestly ever, ever seen a Ouija board or played with a Ouija board? Yeah. Rebellion, you might as well just go say, hey, let's go play with a Ouija board. Now, they're creepy. I don't know if you've ever seen them. I've seen them. I was at a, a yard sale, and they were selling like Ouija board. Man, I got out of the yard sale. I wanted to buy something really nice, something I needed. I've never seen it again. But when they were selling a Ouija board, I'm getting out of there, man. <laughs> and uh, not play, playing with a Ouija board is not kind of fun, but rebellion, or not wise, but rebellion is the same thing. We give the devil, when we give the devil a foothold. And all these things, by the way, it happens gradually. And before we know it, we take everything. It'd be like if uh, every time I went over to Freddie's house, Freddie's got, uh, I remember when you worked at um, Belvica. Is it Belvica? I blame Freddie for, 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 for my blood sugar going up. Because every time, every time, when we went, we, and at that time we were having Bible study at his house on Thursday nights. He always had, God bless him, chocolate bars. Amen. And he always, chocolate bars. And chocolate bars. And maybe Malouk's, where's all the chocolate bars? Well, I gave it to Pastor. You should not give it to Pastor. Uh, Malou says, Malou, he goes, Pastor. I love when Malou says, but they're gone. And you take one thing. But what happens is, is when we give the devil a little bit of ground, a little bit of ground, and a little bit of ground, he takes it small. And then he has you. Mm, gotcha. He's gotcha. And he's not willing to give it back without a fight. We get we get we we get it back by with God. Number two, um, number two, when we when we 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 give the devil the keys to our house when we do the works of the flesh. Oh, Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen. This is verse to, to, to verse twenty one. Says this: I say, then walk in the spirit, and you not shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the fle for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that ye do not have the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, you're not under the law. And now the works of the flesh are manifested in these: idolatry fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatreds, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that ye, that ye uh, sorry, that they which do such shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, we've done it. Works of the flesh. By the way, if you are not working for the Lord and you rebel, it is a work of the flesh. Um, we're saved here, right? I think I'm, I think I'm speaking to everybody who's saved here, right? Amen? Y'all saved? Amen? All right, good. What does God tell us in the Great Commission? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Tell them about the gospel. Did you know the gospel this week? Well, I, 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 I'm afraid. Do you know every time I knock on the door, when I go door knock on the first door, and if I'm the, if I'm the first guy, let's say you and I go soul winning, and we're going to switch each your house. That first time I knock, honestly, and I've been going soul winning for 26 years, I knock the first door and go, Lord, please have him not home so he can do the first one. I'm serious. I, 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 don't want, I, I don't want to be the first guy. I don't want to start off the day. Slam! Oh, great. That's the work of the flesh. Sorry, Lord. Well, I don't like that. You get the door slammed on you. Well, I guess it's no point. I remember one time I had a guy answer in, in Chicago, Illinois. I knocked on the door. I had a guy answer with his big pit bull and a gun. Sir, can I give you this for your dog not to chew off my arm? 
He said, who are you? Are you one of those dumb, ignorant, a few other words, Jehovah Witnesses? I said, no, sir, I'm not. And Gary Kitchen was my, my soul winning partner. He was a big guy. Big guy. I could outrun him. All I had to do was outrun the bullet and the dog and him. I said, no, I'm a Baptist. Oh, you from Indiana Church? Yes, sir. Come on in. Put the gun away and dog away. Then I'll come in. We sat in. Guess what? An hour later, guy weeping, crying. Big guy. Weeping and crying. He accepted Christ. My work of the flesh was saying, dude, see, I'm out of here. <laughs> Here's track. Gotta go. Would he have read it? Probably not. Because he would think we were Jehovah Witnesses. I'm so glad that I didn't listen to my flesh that day. Some guy, big burly guy got saved. I didn't dare tell him that I don't believe dogs will go to heaven. Man, I, mm, I didn't go into that. But my dear friends, the work of the flesh. If we fulfill the lust of the flesh, we cannot fulfill the spirit. The Bible says in Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing uh, uh, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The Bible says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit in Ephesians 5.18. I had somebody say, Well, that's okay. Uh, then I, I, can, I can be filled with... I, 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 it doesn't say be, doesn't be filled with wine. It says I can drink wine. Now, hold on for a second. Here's an illustration, okay? Who can I pick on today? Cecilia, can I borrow you? Have a seat. Trust me. Hold that right there. Very still. Don't move. Okay? Trust me. Still love me? <laughs> Oops. It's just condensation. I'm not pouring it on your head. Don't move. The Bible says to be filled with the Spirit. Okay, let go. I got it. Well, we use the Spirit. What does God say? Hold on to it again. I'm letting go. Did you have a bath today? <laughs> Hold still. God says he'll fill it again. So for, but if we're spi fill, spilled, <laughs> if we're not, if we are filled with something else, God can't add more, can he? But if he fills us with the Spirit and we keep using it, we will... Thank you, young lady. You can let go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. If we are filled with the Spirit and we keep using, he'll keep filling it. And the lust of the flesh says, I don't want that stuff. Now, if I put some... You know, got that out of the toilet. Would you drink it? How many people would drink it? If, if I got it out of the mud puddle outside, would you drink it? But we do that. We get the wrong filling. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. It fills it with the wrong. Okay, if I had a Emily, Emily, right? You seem smart. If this said Javex, Emily, I want to give you a drink. You take a drink. No, thank you. Why? Yes, and it would kill you, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sin kills us. Now, if this is fresh water, would you pour it on your over your husband's head? Depending on if you upset at you today, right? <laughs> but fresh water, you drink it, right? Yeah. Amen. Why? Because it's fresh. Springs of living water. 
but spring of living water. Where do we get the living water? Where do we get taught about the living water? Through God. I'm almost done. I told you it wouldn't be long. By the way, my long is 3 o'clock, so there you go. My dear friends, who has the keys to your house? Giving place to the devil is an easy thing to do, but it's harder to get him out. It's easy. Do you know sometimes it's easier to sin than obey? It is. Oh, I don't want to go to church because there's a good ball game on. It's easier. I don't have to drive. I don't have to listen to the preacher. I don't have to have water poured on my head. It's easier. Stay at home. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations in every... Uh, ten five, sorry. Uh, casting down, uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing you into captivity. Ooh. If we, by the way, every thought to the obedience of Christ, we need to allow the Word of God, allow God's heart to saturate. And by the way. You want to know God's heart? That's how you know it. Right there. Amen? If you want to know what God likes and be more like Christ, you need to saturate your life. Somebody that... Oh, I got to brag on somebody, Malou. Some of the things you've been putting on your Facebook have just wowed me. I read my Bible and God spoke to me. I'm going to put it on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? You're all on Facebook? I know some people don't like it. I know some people do like it, but I, I just got on it. Some people put foolish stuff in there. Christians put foolish stuff in there. I just, a guy, a Christian, I just unfollowed him. I, I did. I unfollowed him. He emailed me. Why did you unfollow me? <laughs> but if we put our, if we allow God to speak to our hearts, what happens is, we can't help but to tell somebody. When you got engaged, did you tell everybody? Yeah! When you got married, did you tell everybody? Yeah! When you got pregnant, did you tell everybody? Hopefully. Uh, but when, when you got saved, did you tell everybody? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Was I supposed to tell everybody? Yes. Folks, the more you're involved in sin, the less you'll be involved in Christ. Stop doing what attracts the devil's attention. Is giving him place. Because you know what attracts the devil's attention? More so, living for God. He gets comfortable when he has place. He just puts his feet up. Well, ah. I don't have to go anywhere. I'm okay. If you start working for the devil, for, for God, the devil will feel very uncomfortable around you. Folks, who has the keys to your house? Who are you working for? Are you a double agent? A spy for, you know, I'm a spy for Jesus. Um, let's just be a one agent. I'm a soldier of God, and I'm trying to live the best way I can live. I'm trying to live the most godly way I live. And folks, if you want to get serious about God, don't open a door for the devil. Amen? Amen. I challenge you. Seriously, and you may you, you may think it's funny, but I challenge you: every time the devil gets to your gets in your house, your car, whatever the case may be, pull over the side of the road, open up front door, say, "Get out." And go to prayer, and say, "God, reveal to me how He got in, so I can change the lock, get that part of the house back, get the part of my life back." God will reveal it. You may not like it, but God will reveal it. And you better to obey it. Because if not, what's a good security? You know, Freddie, you got a security alarm, don't you, at your house? Is it on? Is it on? 
Security alarm is on. Security alarm is good for nothing if it's not armed. Our security alarm is right here. Mm. To the devil. Let's have it armed.